are considering the problem of Boolean satisfiability. We are trying to show that Boolean satisfiability is NP complete. How do you show that a problem is NP complete? When do you say a problem is NP complete or a language is NP complete? If L is in NP, any L dash in NP is polynomially transformable to L. These two conditions have to be satisfied. Now, we have seen that given a Boolean expression, non deterministically you can guess assignment and evaluate that in order n square time. If the length of the Boolean expression is n, non deterministically you can evaluate in order n square time. So, the other thing you have to prove this any L dash in N p is polynomially transformable to L or the Boolean satisfiability. For that, take any L in N p, take any any language L in N p, L is accepted by non deterministic Turing machine in polynomial time p n and it has got symbols x 1, x 2, x m this is the tape alphabet and the state alphabet set of states is given by q 1, q 2, q s. Now, q 1 is taken as the initial state and q 2 is taken as the final state x 1, x 2, x m are the symbols this is the blank symbol this is taken as the blank symbol. Now, if the word given m w given m this is m given m and w you can write a boolean expression w naught. Now, given m and w there will be a sequence of i d s q naught q 1 q 2 up to q q where it will accept q will be less than or equal to p n, but q q plus 1 you take to be the identical with q q same afterwards up to q p n it is the same and the tape cells it uses is at most p n and without loss of generality you assume that every i d has p n cells. So, with these assumptions you write down the expression w naught and how do you go about writing w naught this we have considered in the last lecture itself, but let us repeat you have these conditions the tape head is scanning exactly one cell in i d for each I, each i d has exactly one tape symbol in each tape cell and each i d has exactly one state at most one tape cell the cell scanned by the tape head is modified from one id to the next id and the change in the state the head location the tape cell contents between successive ids is allowed by a move of the turing machine then you have to specify the initial id and the final id for these seven conditions you write expressions boolean expressions making use of boolean variables c i j t what is the meaning of that the i th cell contains the j th symbol at time t h i t means the head is scanning the i th cell at time t and s k t means the state at time t is q k. So, these boolean variables you define. Now, we make use of one expression u x 1 x 2 x r and this is defined as x 1 plus x 2 plus x r pi i not equal to j not of x i plus not of x j. This the length of this expression is order r squared and this is equal to 1 exactly when 1 of this is one others are 0 this all we have seen. Now, how do you write the expressions for them the tape head is scanning exactly one cell in each id. So, you write at time t this is the expression 
H1 T, H2 T, HP and T only one of them will be true, rest of them will be 0 and you have to specify that from the 0th instance to p nth instance. So, the length this itself is of order p squared n and you have p n of them or p n plus 1 of them. So, the length of this expression will be order p cubed n. The second condition is each id has exactly one tape symbol in each each tape cell. So, you write it as expression b, b is product of b i t where it ranges over i and t and b i t is the ith cell at time t contains either symbol 1 or symbol 2 or symbol 3 or symbol m, only one of them will be true. The ith cell at time t can contain only one of them. So, this is there are m symbols here. So, the length of that is order m squared, but m is a constant m and s are constant. So, that is constant, but this itself ranges over i and t, i ranges from 1 to p n, t ranges from 0 to p n. So, it is order p squared n. Similarly, the expression for this thing is each id has exactly one state. So, the state can be only one of them first state 1 or state 2 or state s only one of them will be true that is given by the this expression and you have to take for all t this is for one particular t you have to take for all t. The length of this expression will be order s squared, but s is a constant right. So, the length of this will be order p n. Then the next condition is at most one tape cell the cell scanned by the tape head is modified from one id to next id. So, the expression for that is d the product of some expressions like this where each product tells that either the head is scanning the ith cell at time t ok in that case the cell the contents will change otherwise the ith cell if it contains the jth symbol at time t it will continue to have the same symbol at time t plus 1 it is identity, identically equal to. Here again this the length of this is fixed, but you are taking the product over i j t j will vary from 1 to m which is a constant, but i and t will vary from 1 to p n and 0 to p n respectively. So, it is order p squared n. Then the fifth condition is the change in the state head location and tape cell contents between successive IDs is allowed by a move of m. Now, you must remember that we are considering a non deterministic Turing machine and if you have a q k delta of q k s j right there will be one possibility will be q x d there will be several possibilities like that finite number of choices. So, what we are considering when I we speak of id q naught q 1 q 2 this is one sequence we are considering one sequence which is leading to acceptance there may be many sequences one of them we are considering one of them which is leading to the acceptance they are considering that you must remember. And the fifth one is the change in state head location and tape cell contents between successive IDs is allowed by a move of the Turing machine. The expression for that is E, E is the product of expressions E i j k t, but what is E i j k t? either the ith cell does not contain the symbol j or the head is not scanning the ith cell or the state is not q k at time t. So, if the state is q k and the head is scanning the ith cell and the ith cell is containing x j then the next move has to be specified like this. 
there may be finite number of choices one of them if you take q x d that is given by this the ith cell will contain the symbol specified by j l, j l is x if we look into that at time t plus 1 the state will change from k to k l some other state and the head position will change to i minus 1 or i plus 1 depending upon whether the move is left or right. You are having a finite number of choices of moves that is why the sigma any one of them will be true you choose one of them. So, one of them will be true. Then you have to specify the initial id and the final id uh, before that the length of this expression each one is a finite length but it is a product over i j k t j ranges from 1 to m k ranges from 1 to s. So, they are all constant, but i ranges from 0 uh, 1 to p n and t ranges from 0 to p n. So, the length of the expression will be order p squared. Now, the initial id is specified like this you are taking t is equal to 0 and this initial state is q 1 head is pointing to cell 1 initially 1 0 and the first n cells contain some symbols the input right rest of them contain the blank from n plus 1 to p n it contains the blank symbol first n cells contain the input right. The final thing is at time p n q 2 is the state q 2 is taken as a final state right. Now, even if it goes to a final state at an earlier instant the remaining i d s you keep them as the last q q is the final i d s say it stops at that point and q q plus 1 q plus 2 you take as identical to q q. So, anywhere at time p n it will be in final state. So, the expression w naught is given as the product a b c d e f g and what can you say about this length of this each one is at most order p cubed n p squared n p n or something like that, at most p cubed n and there are 7 such expressions. So, at the most it will be order p cubed n the length of w naught is order p cubed n and you can write it down in a time proportional to that. So, given m and w you can write down w naught in a time which is polynomial that is where the polynomial transformity comes right. Now, you can very easily see that the very the way we have defined the boolean variables c i j k t h i t s k t etcetera the way we have defined them we can see that if there is an accepting sequence of i d s q 1 q 2 q q then you can find an assignment <coughs> to the variables such that w naught will evaluate to 1 or true right. Conversely, if there is an assignment which evaluates uh, for which w naught evaluates to 1 that means, successive ids you can have which leads you to acceptance. So, this shows that any l is polynomially transformable to the Boolean satisfiability problem right. So, Boolean satisfiability is n p complete. Now, once you have shown that Boolean satisfiability is n, n p complete one problem you know that is n p complete ok. This is the class n p and n p attribute this is the class p whether they are equal is not known this is n p complete. 
Now, if I know there is one language L naught which is Boolean satisfiability, any other problem if I have I can show that this is can be transformed to that and if this can be polynomially transformed to another problem that will be also n p complete provided it is in n p. So, that is what you make use of for proving the click problem, uh, vertex cover problem and so many other problems. You reduce the three sad problem or boolean set. Now, generally you take the expression in C n f. C n f satisfiability is n p complete. So, here we are making one more restriction that the given Boolean expression is in C n f. The same proof we are going to follow, same proof will hold only in one or two places it is not in C f f, rest of the thing it is in C n f. The way we have written the u function it is in C n f right and this is in C n f, everything is in C n f except d and e, except d and e rest of them are in C n f, a, b, c are making use of that u, that u expression itself is in C n f and the last two expressions f and g trivially they are in C n f, they are product of single literals, they are also in C n f. So, the only problem for this will be d and e. Now, e itself if you take it is a product of some expressions like this and these expressions are of finite length, they are of finite length using r naught etcetera and any finite length expression you can bring it to C n f, you know that any expression of finite length you can bring it to C n f. So, each one of E i j k t you can bring to C n f by a procedure and that should not take long time, bringing to C n f again will not take much of time and the length also will not increase too much, it may increase by a constant factor. So, this is the product of such expressions. So, it will be you can bring it to C n f and the time taken the polynomial or non polynomial will not is not going to get affected. D is of the form something equivalent to something plus something, this is fixed length, but again this is the product over i j k t. So, it is of this form if you take D, it is of this form x is identically equal to y plus z each expression is of that form. This you can write as x y plus x bar y bar plus z or this is equivalent to x plus y bar x bar plus y sorry, plus z x bar plus y this will be equivalent to this. Right? Convinced? Expand and see, this is equivalent to this and this is in C n f, right? This is in C n f. So, each factor <coughs> in the expression d, you can bring it to C n f. So, everything you can bring to C n f and the time taken to do that is not too much the length when you bring it to C n f the length will not increase too much is not it by linear factor or by a constant factor only it will increase. So, the length of w naught is still again a polynomial in n, 
we had p cubed n maybe the constant factor will get uh, slightly affected you will get an expression okay so the same proof with slight modification you can use for showing that cnf satisfiability is np complete okay now we are assuming that the given boolean expression is in cnf right then 3 sat is n p complete. We put some more restriction that the expressions have to be in conjunctive normal form that is it is a conjunction of disjunctions, but each one each one has only three literals like this bar. Each factor has only three literals that is variables or negation of the variables. How do we prove this? Any expression says x 1 plus x 2 plus x k this is in this is a factor at the c n f k is greater than or equal to 4. Right. Now, I want to find an expression which is equivalent to this such that if this is satisfiable the other one is satisfiable and vice versa and the expression which I am going to write is in such a way that each factor has only 3 literals, it is in 3 sat form right. This is one expression E 1, I am going to write an equivalent expression E 2, uh, I would not say equivalent we are make another expression E 2, where we make use of more variables. Now, if this is satisfied, if there is an assignment which evaluates this one to 1 there will be another assignment which will evaluate e 2 to 1 and vice versa. How do I write the expression e 2? You introduce variables this is x k x 1 x 2 x k. So, you introduce new variables y 1 y 2 y k minus 3 k minus 3 new variables boolean variables you introduced and write an expression like this x 1 plus x 2 plus y 1, x 3 plus y 1 bar plus y 2, x 4 plus y 2 bar plus y 3 and so on. General term will be x i plus y i minus 2 bar plus y i minus 1 right and you proceed up to uh, last one will be x k minus 1 plus x k plus y k minus 3. the previous one will be x k minus 2 x k minus 2 plus y k minus 4 bar plus y k minus 3 and so on. First uh, factor you introduce y 1 the second factor the negation of that and y 2 then next factor negation of y 2 and next one and so on until for x k minus 2 the negation of y k minus 4 and y k minus 3. Then the last factor is x k minus 1 x k and negation of y k minus 3. Now, if there is an assignment to the variables which makes this equal to 1, there is an assignment to the variables which makes this expression equal to 1 
and if there is an assignment which makes this expression equal to 1, there is an assignment which makes this expression equal to 1. How do you prove that? Now, suppose E 1 is equal to 1, that is E 1 evaluates to 1, that is there is some x i which is true, some x i must be 1, then only that expression will evaluate to 1. And look at this factor. Here it is 1, right. So, all y j where j is between 1 and i minus 2 make them equal to 1, give the assignment value 1 give them value 1 and all y j such that j is greater than i minus 2 make them 0. So, what happens y 1 is 1, so this will be 1, y 2 is 1, so this will be 1, each of the factors will be 1 and look at these factors when it is greater than i minus 2 it is 0, so the barred version will be true, this, this is 1, this is 1 and so on. So, those factors will be true, but look at this factor, this is 1, the barred version this is 0, y i minus 2 is 1, y i minus 2 bar is 0, y i minus 1 is 0, but x i is 1, so this factor will also evaluate to so, each of the factors evaluates to 1. So, there if there is an assignment which makes this expression equal to 1, there is another assignment which makes this assignment equal to 1. And conversely, E 2 is equal to 1 implies E 1 is equal to 1. I mean E 2 is equal to 1, what I mean is E 2 evaluates to 1, then E 1 evaluates to 1. How do I prove that? This expression evaluates to 1. So, each one of the factors should be 1. Okay. If each one of the factor is 1, then I say that this also evaluates to 1. Okay. We will start with that. Suppose x 1 or x 2 is 1 obviously, the result holds. If x 1 is 1 or x 2 is 1, this uh, x 2 is 1, this will evaluate to 1. So, you have to consider the case where x 1 is x 2 is equal to 0. And similarly, if x k 1 is 1 or x k minus 1 is 1 or x k is 1, then one of them is 1 means this will also be 1. So, you have to consider the case when x k minus 1 is equal to x k is equal to 0. Now, this factor must evaluate to 1, if x 1 is equal to x 2 is equal to 0, y 1 must be 1, right. And if this evaluates to 1, if this is 0, this is 0, this must be 1 right that is y k minus 3 must be equal to 0, then only the bar version then a negative version will be 1. So, if you look at the assignment for y 1, y 2, y k minus 3, this is 1, this is 0. So, somewhere it will change from 1 to 0, at some position it will change from 1 to 0, it, it may change in many places, but at least one position it will change from 1 to 0. That is y i minus 1 is 1, y i is 0. And here you have a factor x 
x i plus 1 plus y i minus 1 bar plus y, there will be a factor like this, right. And this is y i minus 1 is 1, so this is 0, this is 0. So, this has to be 1, every factor must evaluate to 1. So, there should be one variable which evaluates to 1. So, if there is one variable which one literal which evaluates to 1, then this expression becomes 1. So, if this is satisfiable, this is satisfiable and if this is satisfiable, this is satisfiable. Right? What can you say about the length of this expression? It will be some constant times the length of this, some 7 or 8 whatever it is, because each one you have a factor whose length will be some 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or something like that. So, the length is only increased by in a linear way. 7 times if the length of the original expression is n, this will be some 8 times n or something like that, right. So, from this you can write down this in a very uh, systematic manner and that is not going to take lot of it is only going to take linear amount of time, right. So, in the original problem, you had everything in CNF. The first one, is some expressions were not in CNF, then we saw that they can be converted into CNF. Now, once the expression is in CNF, each one of the factors you can make it into a expression like this, where each factor has only three literals, and the time to do that will be only linear in terms of the length of the original expression. Okay, so, the polynomial or the non polynomial is this I mean the polynomial question is not affected right. So, from this we conclude that 3 sat is okay. So, once you have this 3 sat, you have CNF satisfiability 3 sat, many problems you can immediately reduce, this you can reduce to click, this you can reduce to vertex cover and so on. Like that, once you have one problem which is known to PNP complete, you can reduce it to some other problem by a polynomial transformation and show that that is NP complete, right. This is a method which is uh, followed. Okay. We shall show that the click problem is NP complete by showing that the CNF satisfiability is polynomial term reducible to the click problem. Actually, once we know that the problem is NP complete, we can reduce it to another problem and show that the new problem is NP complete. That is what we are going to do now. We know that CNF satisfiability is NP complete. Now, we are going to reduce it to the click problem. Now, what is a click problem? A click is a complete subgraph of a graph. The click problem may be stated like this, does an undirected graph G have a click of size k? We have to represent the graph G as a string. This can be done by listing the edges of G, k is also an input where you have to find out whether it has a click of size k. If d g is an encoding of g, then k hash d g you can take as the encoding of the click problem. Now, we want to show that the click problem is NP complete. To show a problem is NP complete, 
two things we have to do. One is we have to show that it is in N p and then we have to reduce a known N p complete problem to that. So, to show that it is in N p what we do is we can construct a non deterministic Turing machine which will accept this in polynomial time. So, we can have a non deterministic Turing machine which non deterministically it selects k vertices of g and then it checks whether the edges exist between every pair of these k vertices. If edges exist between every pair of these k vertices then there will be a subgraph which is a complete subgraph of size k that is a click. So, non determinately non deterministically it can select k vertices and do this. It is straightforward to see that this checking can be done in polynomial time. So, we have proved that the click problem is in N p. Now, we have to show that the C n f satisfiability is polynomial term reducible to the click problem. Given an instance of the expression in C n f with k classes we construct a graph which has click of size k if and only if the C n f expression is satisfiable. Let us take the C n f expression as E that is E 1, E 2, E k there are k classes each E i is a class this is a Boolean expression. Now, each E i is a class and it is of the form x i 1 or x i 2 or etcetera x i k 1. There are k 1 literals in this class. So, each x i j is a literal it is a variable or a negation of a variable. Now, construct an undirected graph in the following manner given an instance of C n f you construct a graph in the following manner g has vertices v and edges e the vertices are represented by pairs of integers i j where i will be from 1 to k and j will be from 1 to k i. That is the first component of the label of a vertex will be 1 to k that is k classes it will denote the class to which the variable will belong and j will denote the literal in that class. Okay. Suppose, you have i j that means, it is corresponding to the i th class and the j th literal in that class. So, j will vary from 1 to k i the number of vertices in g is equal to the number of literals in the given C n f each vertex of the graph corresponds to a literal of e. Now, once we have formed the vertices of v, we have to find the edges of g. How do we join two vertices by an edge in g? Two pairs i j and k l can be joined by an edge or an edge exists between these two pairs i j and k l. If i not equal to k that is the first component should be different and x i j not equal to not of s x k l that is it should be possible to assign the values such that both can have value 1 that is that this corresponds to a literal in the ith class and this corresponds to a literal in the kth class. They should not be such that one is y and another is not y that is one should not be the negation of the other one is a variable and the another is the negation of the variable they should not be of that form. If they are not of that form an edge can exist between them that is if one is y we have this condition if one is y and the another is not y we cannot assign values independently. If we assign some value to y the other one automatically will take the other value if we assign value 1 to a 1 the other will take the value 0 and so on. To enable independent assignment of values to x i j and x k l we have the condition that x i j is not equal to not of x k l. Now, how many vertices do we have? It is equal to the number of literals in the expression and number of vertices in is g is less than the length of e because 
E consists of the literals as well as some more symbols right and the number of edges will be at most the square of it. So, G can be encoded as a string whose length is bounded by a polynomial in the length of E. The number of vertices in G will be equal to the number of literals and hence less than the length of E and the number of edges at the most could be of the order n squared where n is the number of vertices. So, in if you want to encode G it can be encoded in such a way that the length is bounded by a polynomial in the length of E and this can be written down in time bounded by a polynomial in the length of E that is you have a polynomial time algorithm which will convert one instance of C n f to one instance of the click problem. Now, we show that G has a click of size k if and only if E is satisfiable. Now, if E is satisfiable we have to show that G has a click of G has a click of size k and vice versa. If E is satisfiable, then every has every class has a literal which takes a value 1. There is a literal in each class which takes a value 1. Now, you construct a graph from E and in this you consider the subgraph of G whose vertices correspond to the literals which take the value 1. In each class we have at least one literal taking the value 1, take one literal from each class which has the value 1, consider the subgraph of G corresponding to those vertices, we will find that it is a click, it is a complete subgraph. The k vertices have their first components as 1 to k, no two of them will be the same and we consider the vertices i m where i varies from 1 to k. This these vertices form a click. Suppose there does not exist a edge between two of them i m i j m j i and j are different. If the edge will not exist or this can happen only if x i m i is equal to not x j m j that is one is the negation of another that is one is a variable and another is the negation of that variable. So, if x i m i is equal to 1 x j m j will be 0 or the other way around, but we have chosen the literals in such a way that all of them have values 1 from each class we have chosen a literal which has the value 1. So, this cannot happen that is x m x i m i equal to not x j m j is not possible. So, between every pair of vertices we have an edge. Now, the other way around if g has a click of size k then we show that e is satisfiable let i m be a click that is i should be all different by our construction the vertices will have such labels and no of them will have the same first component. The vertex i m i corresponds to the literal x m i in the ith class and this literal may be a variable or it may be the negation of a variable. It may be of the form y or not y. If it is a variable assign the value 1 to it. If it is a negation of the variable assign the value 0 to it, 0 to that variable. As there is an edge between every pair of vertices x i m i is not equal to not of x j m j. So, consistently we can assign values to the variables because one is not the negation of another. So, consider the vertices i m i this will correspond to the literal 
x m i in the ith class and if it is a variable make it y, if it is a negation of the variable make the variable 0. If we assign values to the variable this way, then each class will evaluate to 1 and so the expression E will evaluate to 1. So, E will be satisfiable. So, what we have done is from one instance of C n f, we have constructed a, an instance of a graph such that the C n f expression is satisfiable if and only if the graph has a click of size k. That is, we have reduced C n f satisfiability to the click problem and this transformation has been done in polynomial time. So, polynomially we have reduced uh, the C n f problem to the click problem in polynomial time and so the click problem is n p complete. So, this way known n p complete problems can be reduced to unknown problems in polynomial time and the new problems can be shown to be n p complete. This is the method followed to prove that some problem is in is n p complete. Let us illustrate the construction by an example. Suppose the C n f expression is this p 1 or p 2 or p 3 and not p 1 or not p 3 and not p 2 or not p 3 corresponding to each literal we have a vertex. So, for these three we have these three vertices the first component tells you that it belongs to the first class. Now, there are two literals in the second class. So, you have two vertices there are two literals in the third class. So, two vertices with first component 3. Now, from P 1 there will be an edge to every literal corresponding to this or every vertex corresponding to the literals unless that is not of P 1. If P 1 is there, if it is not P 1 there will not be an edge between this and this. So, that you find that there is no edge between this and this. So, there will be an edge between this and this that is this and here P 1 does not exist at all. So, from P 1 there will be an edge to this, there will be an edge to this that is from this there is an edge to this and there is an edge to this. Similarly, from P 2 there will be an edge to both this. So, from this there is an edge here, there is an edge here and here you have not P 2. So, there will not be an edge between this and this there is no edge, but there will be an edge between this and this, this is given by this. Likewise, the edges have been drawn. Now, you see that if P 1 is equal to 1, this is an assignment P 1 is equal to 1, P 2 is equal to 1, P 3 is equal to 0, 1 1 takes the value 1, this is evaluates 1, P 3 is 0, not P 3 evaluates 1. So, this is 1, again P 3 is 0, not P 3 evaluates to 1. So, this class is also true. So, you find that this, this and this form a click of size 3, this. So, far thousands of problems have been proved to be NP complete, more and more problems are being proved to be NP complete. They are from different fields, some are from automata theory, some are from graph theory, some are from set theory and so on. Some of them are vertex cover problem in a graph. Hamiltonian circuit problem in a graph, set cover problem in set theory, regular expression inequalance in automata theory, three dimensional matching in set theory, integer programming problem. These are some of the problems which have been proved to be NP complete. So, I will uh, just uh, deviate and uh, talk about the busy beaver problem which I give you.
what is a busy beaver? There are slightly different versions given in different books. So, when you read a book, uh, it is slightly different. You, I mean, you may feel that, but uh, the original problem is given like this. Consider a Turing machine with n states and a halting state. in non halting states and the final halting state. If started on a blank tape, what is the maximum number of ones it will print and then halt? Okay. That is the known as sigma it is given by a function sigma 1, sigma 0 will be 0, sigma 1 is 1, sigma 2 is 4. The machine for that we can have states S and T, this is the initial state, then the halting state. This machine is the solution for B B 2. The assignment I have asked you to construct B B 3, the value for that is sigma 3 is 6, sigma 4 is 13, sigma 5 it is not a computable function, it is very difficult to find out what is the value of sigma 5. Sigma 5, so people you have to try out all possibilities and uh, see uh, what is this. In fact, in some books the variation is slightly, it is slightly different. The problem is specified as the tape alphabet is taken at 0, 1 and blank. You start with 1, 1, 1 on the tape, n ones and the machine has n all halting states plus one more states. Then ultimately when it halts, how many, what is the maximum number of ones that is printed? Slightly different version of this, but it computes the same function, right. Now, the, at one time there was a competition held for the, uh, I mean find out what is the value of sigma phi. This is uh, something. There was a GI conference which was held in Dartmouth in 1982 or 83. And the, uh, p they were given prizes. Who uh, work, uh, you have to run a program and check. Uh, this, these are the something like Oscar <laughs> prizes. No? This is a beaver. What is a beaver? Beaver is something like an ant which brings the twigs and uh, builds something. So, the prices were given as in terms of a statue, which looks like a beaver. So, this first price, second price, third price were given. So, the solution at that time was now this uh, sigma 3 is 6, but that machine makes 13 moves, okay. Number of moves which it makes for printing is also important. So, in that the first prize was won by a person, U school from Hamburg, he had 501 ones printed in 134467 steps. 
and the second price was uh, 240 once printed in 41,360 steps and the third price went to once uh, second price uh, Ludwig from Baden, Switzerland and another one uh, is third price is Mus, Soniken and Kyle, 168 ones with 21294 steps. But that is not the final one, later on 84 or 85 with 5 states, so many ones were printed. I do not have the correct reference, but uh, Dudney 1984 85, where 1915 ones were printed with 5 states. It is not compute, the, func the function is grows very fast, it will not be computable. Uh, like you know, Ackermann's function is computable, it is uh, not primitive recursive because it grows very fast compared to any primitive recursive functions. Here, so sigma phi has so many values. What about sigma 6? At in 83 itself, there was a machine which could print 2075 ones in 42088. 2 4 steps. Later on it might have been improved. At, see at that time in 83 or so the interest was so much on this finding out. Similarly, at one time the uh, trade off between the states and the symbols, state symbols of Turing machine was of very big importance. People, many people were working at that time. Nowadays nobody works on such things. Then sigma 12. Apparently, it is more than this, at least there is one machine which has so many ones printed, 6 times 4096 to the power of 4096 to the power of 4096 to the power of 4096 like that, this is 165 times. In 83, they ha had a machine which could do this. So, it may be larger than that. So, uh, for 12 uh, states itself, number is very large. That means, you can see that it is not a computable function. It is very difficult to compute. So, this is uh, just a variation. And regarding the state, when I drew a diagram of about the state diagram of Turing machines. State diagram of Turing machines can be like this. From one state, you go to another state. The move can be written like this. That is delta of Q A is equal to P B R. The mapping can be written in this manner. Sometimes, Instead of R R L, this symbol is also used to denote R R L. But this is in the recent books. Recent book means books written after, uh, say, 87, 88. Earlier books, books which were written in the 70s, self loops will be usually omitted. And the state will be, the state name will be written here, and R R L will be written within the cell within the circuit. The earlier books which are written in uh, 60s and 70s, that say diagram is denoted like this. And uh, this says, that means from Q naught after reading a A, 
you rewrite it with B and go to Q 1 and move left. When you go to Q 1, you move left, when you go to Q naught, you move right. This is the way the thing is written and usually if you just uh, do not rewrite, but move right in the same state or move left, self loops will be there. Those self loops are usually not given in the diagram. That is the an, uh, convention followed in earlier books, books which were written say the 70s and 60s. So, if you take a book, uh, see what notation he is following. Okay. So, with this I stop. Mm -hmm.